Hello everyone, welcome back to another Offram vlog. Today is July the 20th, 2019. It is also day three of San Diego Comic-Con. And today is the day that a lot of Marvel fans have been waiting for. The announcement of the films from Marvel Studios Phase 4. And there is a lot to think, speculate like what unexpected announcement are we going to get. There's probably the obvious announcements. There's also, yeah, there's the obvious movies that are in development. <clears throat> and Sit. Yep. And then. Yeah, there's a lot to think of and a lot to put it all in. Like, I know I'm excited about it. I know a lot of you who are watching this have been excited, have been excited. And yep. Yeah. Now Marvel, Marvel's YouTube channel, they did a, they did live streams for San Diego Comic-Con. And for today, all I, I just went to their live stream and then looked at the comments. It's like a bunch of people like wanting phase four, phase four, phase four, phase four, 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 four. When's phase four? What? We want phase four, phase four, phase four, 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 and that shit. And, and then there's comments that are like, you idiots. You're gonna be like, you idiot. It's not gonna live stream. <laughs> you done? All right. There's the obvious ones. There's the obvious films that are already in development, ones that are already announced. And I want to talk about the ones that the I'm gonna list a bunch of movies that are probably in development or about to be announced for Phase Four at San Diego Comic Con. There's obviously the Black Widow solo movie, which finally we're getting, and yeah, I'm happy that we're getting. I'm surprised that we are getting a Black Widow solo movie, finally. Yeah, you're probably thinking, yeah, we're getting a Black Widow solo movie, and we still haven't got another Hulk movie. Speaking of Hulk, I just rewatched The Incredible Hulk, you know, the one with Ed Norton. That's part of the MCU. And it was actually pretty underrated. It's actually pretty good it deserves more attention than it should need and now the other film that's also in development is the internals movie now a lot of you watching this are going to be like who you know like when when they announced the movies for Phase 2 at San Diego Comic-Con, they announced Guardians of the Galaxy. And same here, a lot of people are like, who? Yeah, because no, because before that movie came out, nobody even remember who the Guardians of the Galaxy were. Until the movie came out and now it, everyone loves them. Hell, they have, even have their own Disney ride. Which replaced the Hollywood Tower of Terror. Speaking of Disneyland, I just went, I went to Disneyland last month when I graduated from high school for grad night. I had the time of my life. I got to meet Spider-Man. I got to meet Woody, Mr. Incredible, Goofy, 
Oh yeah, Lightning McQueen. There's Goofy, Donald, Mickey, and Minnie. And I got to go on Radiator Springs Racers, Toy Story Mania, yada, yada, yada. And yeah, a lot of people are just and saying when they're gonna announce internals, a lot of people are gonna be like, who? What? Who are they? Yeah, it's gonna be like Guardians. It's just like when they announce Guardians of the Galaxy. It's they're not sure what they don't remember who they were. Now the internals, as far as I can remember. All right, at least I have my laptop right here so I could just look up what. So the the internals are basically the er, earliest version of mankind. Jack, legendary comic book artist Jack Kirby came came up with the internals. as as he was inspired by the ancient Greek mythology and how the human and the human evolution so so yeah there are I'm, I'm sorry, I made, did a pause there. I am. It's gonna, probably going to take a while, but. But hey. So the Internals are a fic fictional species of humanity. It's loading. So yeah, the Internals are a fictional species of humanity. They are described as an offshoot of the evolutionary process that created sentient life on Earth. The original instigators of this process, the alien celestials, who are in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they were introduced in Guardians of the Galaxy, so they are going to we are going to get to see the internals it was say so the internals were created by Jack Kirby and made their first appearance in the internals number one in Ju on July of 1976 that's almost like years ago and finally to this day, we are going to, the Eternals are going to get their own movie. They're going to get their own movie. And the move, and it's going to focus on key characters of, and we're, we're still going to have our character, key characters, and yeah, we're going to get our key characters from the Eternals. There's Icarus and Cersei. I don't know if I pronounce it right. The film is going to be direct. The movie is going to be directed by Chloe Zhao. You probably might not know her, but. I'm open. She's she's a female. She's the first female director. Oh wait, that's not that. But she is a first. I think the first female director to create, to direct a superhero movie based on a group, a group of superheroes. The first female to direct a movie about a group of superheroes. Yeah. In. Well, she's not the first female to direct a Marvel superhero, superhero movie. We still got the 
Black Widow movie that hopefully it's done filming already. It's I don't know how long it's filming. It's probably done filming. So a lot of casting rumors have there's a lot of casting rumors with Angelina Jolie playing Cersei and Richard Madden to play Icarus and we also have and there's also more casting rumors like Kumal Nanjiani of Silicon Valley the big sick and we got Mad Don Lee or Mad Dong Silk or just Don Lee and we got some and there's Salma Hayek Millie Bobby Brown and the breathtaking Keanu Reeves Finally, since Kevin Feige said that we try to contact Kevin Feige on every Marvel to be in to be in our movies, like literally they call him for every Marvel movie. It just like doesn't probably doesn't want to sign a multi-contract deal, multi-picture deal. But if he like plays a villain, then he, that you'll eventually kill off. He'll do it. He'll do it. A lot of people have, have been fan casting. Like, who do you think Keanu Reeves should play? Like, a lot of people want him to see play Silver Surfer, the Wolverine, and oh yeah, Moon Knight. So yeah. So our, the usual set of characters of the Eternals are going to be Cersei, Icarus, Zeras, Thena, and Makati. I know I have bad pronounce. I know, if I pronounce them wrong, I'm so sorry. If I pronounce most of these wrong, I'm so sorry. I I have bad pronunciation. Plus, it's also going to introduce the... It's also going to have a younger version of Thanos. Since he was one of the... Since he's part of since he was around when life, when the Eternals were created by the Celestials, he was part of the decree. And yeah, I would love, I would go see the, the Eternals. And there's also an announcement of there's the obvious Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. It was originally going to be set to direct by James Gunn, but was fired by fired by Disney because of some tweets that were some old tweets started to surface with him making about him making pedophilia jokes. Listen, just because the man made pedophilia jokes doesn't mean he actually did. He is a pedophile. But, and then once he was fired, DC jumped at the chance, hired James Gunn to direct the new Suicide Squad reboot called The Suicide Squad. And, 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 and since then, now, it was announced like a couple months ago that they, that James Gunn's been brought back. 
He was hired to make Guardians of the Galaxy 3 again. Uh, they said they're gonna... They said they're gonna start filming Guardians of the Galaxy 3 after James Gunn is done directing the Suicide Squad reboot. And if you saw Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, you know that if you stayed at the end of the credits, it introduced us to Adam. Finally gonna get introduced finally gonna introduce to be introduced to Adam Warlock into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now I would I'm excited about seeing Adam Warlock in the MCU. Just much as I love seeing a new two other characters and, a, and two certain superhero groups from a different studio that Disney purchased that I'll talk about later and and it was and it's also it was also in development the Black Panther 2 which I thought the movie was okay I have no I feel like the movie would have been been a little bit better. Out of the movie's okay, it's just it's not that good to be nominated for best picture. And yes, it was nominated for best picture and it lost to Green Book. It, it was a Green Book was a good movie. I I I wanted a I wanted Roma to win, but hey, at least the director won best best cinematography, best directing, best foreign language film. So I knew that a man who directed it also did his own cinematography, and I was like, "Yeah, there's, there's got to be a lot I need to learn at film school when I get to college." And there's also Doctor Strange too. I would be interested in seeing Doctor Strange 2. I would love to see it. And then we also get... We also get, It's just recent, been recently announced that we're getting a Thor 4. The first Marvel character to get a fourth movie. The first MCU character to get a fourth movie. And... And Taikata, I think that's his name, the guy, he who directed Thor Ragnarok, he's going to be returning to direct this one. Said so I really love Thor Ragnarok. I especially love Korg, the character he played. He's just a big guy made of rocks, and he has this New Zealand accent. That's this New Zealand accent. Hi, mate. Hello, I'm Cork. This is Meek. We're about to head out on this spaceship. You want to come? Piss off, ghost! <laughs> oh, Meek's dead. <laughs> accidentally carried. Accident. Accidentally stomped on him on the way he, on the bridge. Feel feel bad for carrying him around. Oh, oh, Meek, you're alive. He's alive, guys. What was your question again? Oh yeah, I was. I would be interested in seeing a Thor. For, I think the last Thor movie I saw in the theater was Thor: The Dark World. My parents were really lazy, or were just really lazy to ask them. We want to ask them, like, "Oh, we want to go see this movie in theater." And they're like, "Okay," and we never got to see it. And next, we got. Hopefully, we're gonna see a new Spider-Man movie. Now, if. Listen, if you guys have not seen Spider-Man Far From Home, if you have not seen Spider-Man Far From Home, please stop watching this video and just go watch Spider-Man Far From Home. And then when you, if you don't, you got to stay throughout the whole movie, even through, throughout all the credits. If you don't, and then you can finish watching this. So there are going to be spoilers. There are going to be spoilers. So... 
in the mid credit scene of Spider-Man Far From Home, we see Spider-Man get dropped off. Dro we see Spider-Man dropped off MJ. And then when he's about to swing away, he sees a news flash of a video that was made by Mysterio before he was killed, killed off. And he's framing Spider-Man for attacking him and kill about to killing him. And you should know that Mysterio is the bad guy. We, I've... I know that Mysterio is a, a bad guy. And the trailers, he's like, saying, oh, he's a hero. And and I'm like, he's a bad guy. He's going to be the bad guy. He's tricking people. He always, he, he's known for tricking people. And anyway, he, and then I was, and, and that cameo, the cameo at, from in Spider-Man Homecoming at that mid credit scene literally made my jaw drop. Like that. Yeah, that was my face when I saw... That was my face when I saw J. Jonah Jameson played by none other than J.K. Simmons from the Spider-Man trilogy. The Raimi trilogy. I was thinking they were gonna recast him, but... They, they got him back. <laughs> There's probably, there's like no other actor that we can imagine playing J. Jonah Jameson. J.K. Simmons is the best version of J. Jonah Jameson. And he is, he is like the best version of J. Jonah Jameson that he's still, that he even voiced a character in cartoons. Like this man, like Hugh Jackman, was born to play J. Jonah Jameson, just like Hugh Jackman was born to play Wolverine and Robert Downey Jr. playing, was born to play Iron Man. So yeah, I would love to see Spy the new Spider-Man movie since not only the, the Mr. Why did I say J. Jonah Jameson? Because the video was released, as I quote, the controversial news site, thedailybugle.com. So the Daily Bugle is no longer a newspaper company, no longer a newspaper company since who the hell reads newspapers anymore? And instead has been turned into more like Infowars and J. Jonas Jameson is more of like an Alex Jones kind of figure. Uh, I would love to see more J.K. Simmons Yelling, I want more pictures of Spider-Man! What is all this? This looks fake. All these Spider-Man pictures look fake. I want more pictures of Spider-Man. Yeah. Okay, and then... What else? Oh yeah, there's also a Captain Marvel sequel. Again, like with Black Panther, I thought the movie was okay. I feel like the movie would have been a little bit better. I don't know why the movie received a lot of hate. But I thought the movie was okay. I thought it was it was okay. And we're also still expecting for another Ant-Man movie to complete a, a trilogy of Ant-Man movies, unless if there's more. Seriously, gotta make another Ant-Man movie. And now we're gone on to the characters that I've would be excited to see in the MCU. One of them being Nova. I would love to see Nova in the MCU. I would love to see a Nova solo movie. And also, another character is probably one of the oldest characters in in the Marvel Universe. Like, when the Marvel was published, started publishing comic books. And that is... Namor, the Submariner, who is basically Marvel's version of Aquaman, even though Namor came first and DC copied them. And yet, Aquaman's more iconic than Namor. But I would love to bring more, make people be more in, 
help people get interested in Namor again. I I feel like Marvel is just cashing in on Aquaman who that made billions of dollars at the box office. Hopefully that's not like that. Nor Bl Black Widow is trying to cash in on Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman 19 1984. Oh yeah, that's gonna come out next year. So yeah, Nova, Namor, I would love to see them in the MCU. I would love to see them have their own movies. I would definitely go see them. And then... Here's like two more... Movies. Two more move. Two more pro MCU films that I would love to see. That hopefully they get announced. Now, last year, it was announced that Disney is going to purchase 21st Century Fox. And as of March of 2019, that deal has been completed. Now Disney owns the 20, now Disney owns 20th Century Fox. And, the, and you know what that means. Now, when Marvel went through when Marvel signed for bankruptcy they sold the, they sold the film rights to their most popular characters like they sold the rights to the Hulk Namor to Universal Spider-Man to Sony and the X-Men and Fantastic Four to Fox and since Disney now owns Fox which means that the X-Men and Fantastic Four are back home at Marvel just so that now they could finally be welcomed into the Marvel Cinematic Universe now I to me the Fantastic Four could easily be introduced in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and that's why I would love to I would be losing my shit if they announced a Fantastic Four movie. I would be so happy. I would be going straight to the th theater when it comes out. Hell, I would do a midnight screening. I would just wait in line, read Fantastic Four comics, went, waiting for for me to see this great movie. See this movie because because now the Fantastic Four is in good hands. Which means we will finally get a good Fantastic Four movie. Because, as you know, every single Fantastic Four movie ever made sucked. The 1994 version that was never released, that was made by Roger Corman. Just so that the studio who owned the rights to the character could keep the rights to the character. That one sucked. The two Fantastic Four movies from Fox, you know, Fantastic Four and Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, those sucked as well. And let's not forget the atrocity known as fan, as the Fantastic Four reboot, or as fans like to call it, Fan Four Stick. Yeah. It's just sad. They're one of the first comic... The Fantastic Four is one of the first comic book superhero team that Stan Lee ever created. I mean, this man rest in peace. And... It never got justice on the big screen. I would love to see, the, see them come into the Fantastic Four. And I agree with the fans, with the fans who doing fan love fan casting i've been doing fan casting recently when the when these two prop marvel properties are returned to marvel studio are in the hands of marvel studios i agree that i would love to see john krasinski and emily blunt as mr fantastic and the invisible woman and and so far for 
the Human Torch, and the thing. I'm still don't know at this time. I'm still thinking at this time. And so I would love to see a Fantastic Four movie. I would love to. And and then there's the X Men, which I don't think we'll probably get another movie. In like, I don't think we'll ever see them in the MCU in like five years. As of making this video, who knows if they're gonna be in Phase Four or hints that the X Men are gonna come to the MCU, like hints of the mutant gene have starting to be more like hints of the human, like the X gene and mutants. Probably like introduced to some mutant characters. Like, for Avengers, if I remember in Avengers Age of Ultron, they introduced us to the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, who are mutants in the comics. But since the X Men is owned by Fox, they can't be called mutants. So they just go, so they just went with the safe word miracles. Even though I still stand that they're mutants. Yeah. I know a lot of you liked Evan Peters' version of Quicksilver. In the Fox X-Men films from Days of Future Past to Dark Phoenix. I, I think that Aaron Taylor Johnson's Quicksilver is really underrated. underrated. A... It really deserves more love. It stands true to the comic version of Quicksilver. Unlike the Fox's version of Quicksilver. It's trying to be more like a jokester. More of like a Flash kind of character. I was, I was kind of sad that they killed him off. Well, the reason they killed him off because Aaron Taylor Johnson didn't want to appear in more movies. He didn't want to sign the multi-picture contract there's a lot of people actors who want to avoid making superhero movies it's because of the word multi-picture contract they don't want to sign they don't want to appear in a lot of movies hell even chris evans wasn't was hesitant about playing captain america because of signing the multi-picture contract but he accepted the role and he said that if he turned down the role of Captain America, it would have been the biggest mistake of his life. And you'll have to live the rest of your life being known as playing Johnny Storm, the Human Torch. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I would love to see the X-Men in the MCU. I especially would love to see certain characters that I would I think what I would love to see in a team of X-Men I think for me I'd like to see Cyclops Jean Grey Angel Beast Storm Nightcrawler Nightcrawler Iceman Kitty Pride and Jubilee I would love to see, oh yeah, and Psylocke, to all the fans of the, I also enjoy, and Gambit, I would love to see these characters, I think that would be my kind of dream, and I, I don't think you'll try to introduce a couple of these characters, but, I, and yet, I, I feel like they should not, for the MCU version of the X-Men, don't put Wolverine in the first X-Men movie. Because if you put that character in in the movie, they're just going to want him to... It's just, you're just going to focus on him throughout the whole movie. Either just introduce him in the second film, or at least give him his own solo movie. I, I think for an MCU... For the MCU Wolverine movie, I would love to see an adaptation of the Weapon X storyline. 
And since Fox has attempted to do the Dark Phoenix storyline, the Phoenix storyline, yeah, the Phoenix storyline, the Dark Phoenix, I'm, it's just, they just ruined it. Fox just ruined the Phoenix storyline, not only in X Men The Last Stand, but in Dark Phoenix. And I think if the MCU is going to do the Dark Phoenix story justice, instead of doing one movie, a trilogy, like, have the X Men. And first be so if, like the, for the first movie, it's gonna be like the right, like the beginning of Phoenix when when the X Men were taken by I don't know which character it was like General. The one general who, when the movies be, was like a president, and then the X Men would go try to rescue them, and then would lead to them trying to escape, and then we got this like huge entity, and that Phoenix Gene just wants to help, just move the get the ship back to Earth, and then just getting absorbed by this energy, which led to the to her becoming the Dark Phoenix. And then the second movie is just entirely about the Phoenix, and at the end, the rise of the Dark Phoenix. We're gonna have the second movie having to be Jean being seduced. No, well, not, not seduced, but controlled the Phoenix controlled by the Hellfire Club just so she could be the new White Queen. The Just to, so he could be the new Black Queen. And then once the Phoenix once Jean finds out that she's been Tricked. This ultimately led to all this anger, these anger inside of her, to finally be released, which ultimately creates the Dark Phoenix. And then destroys the planet, which ultimately led to her destroying a planet. And then when they finally stop the Fe the Phoenix, st stop the Dark Phoenix, and Jean return as the Phoenix. They've been taken away by the Kree. I think it's the Kree. For and then the Phoenix has been charged for blowing up this planet. And. And this will ultimately lead to a third film about, led to the third film, I think I would call The Dark Phoenix, which is mainly about what caused The Dark Phoenix. And, which ultimately will lead her to them killing off Jean. It will be the end of Jean Grey. Yeah, I would love to see them try to do a Dark Phoenix story as a trilogy. And hey, should I find out we only have like an hour left until they're going to announce phase four. So.
Hopefully I'm gonna So yeah. I'm I'm love to see the X-Men done right. Especially my favorite X-Men Cyclops. A lot of people when you ask who's your favorite X-Men, the obvious answer will be Wolverine. My favorite is Cyclops because he's the leader of the X-Men. He knows how, despite having very dangerous powers, you know, he wants to help control it and just help control himself and rather not be an evil, not use these powers for evil. That's what I love about Cyclops. And I hate, and I mean, I hate what the X-Men, the Fox's X-Men films did to Cyclops. They just made them this jerk who just m pisses off Wolverine all the time. God, I just really, really fr freaking irritated. Like, if Marvel Studios approached me telling them we're going to introduce the to X-Men, we want you to know what would you like to see in an X-Men film. Like, the first thing I'm going to say, do Cyclops right. I want to see Cyclops, the leader of the X-Men. So yeah, I would love to see the X-Men. Marvel Studios, if you're watching this, maybe you're not. Please do this character justice. Do Cyclops justice. And then there is an, one movie that a lot of people would be excited. I would be excited for I would love to see what people really want is a new Avengers movie, especially since if you, especially since, especially an Avengers movie after the events of Avengers Endgame. I think for me, if they're going to make a new Avengers movie, I would love to see an adaptation of Secret Wars. Since it's the one Avengers movie that hasn't been adapt Avengers story that hasn't been adapted into film. And since and since it includes Fox character since it includes X-Men and Fantastic Four, which are now gonna be home to Marvel Studios in the MCU, I might get a a, a Secret Wars mo movie. Maybe not. Maybe they'll join the, be part of like the X Men and being in Phase Five. But anyway, the movies I would be excited to see: the Internals. There's a Black Widow movie. The Internals, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. Thor Four. And for like the movies that are hopefully they're gonna announce like Fantastic Four, Nova, Namor, I would go see them as well. I would, especially Fantastic Four, I would be most excited about. But anyway, that is it for today. Thank you for watching this vlog. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell, comment down below. Are you excited for Marvel's Phase 4? The MCU Phase 4. And which film are you excited for? Since it's probably going to be posted. Just like a couple. Like a few out. Like one hour. Before the announcement. And I would be. Making a follow up video. About my. React. About my opinion. On the movies of Phase 4. Okay, what about a reaction? I was like, they're not gonna live stream it. I really wish they're gonna live stream it, but they, they're not. I really wish, but. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side. And remember, I am Iron Man.